Welcome everyone and uh, thanks for joining us. I'm Nikki Clark, Chief Executive of UMI and we're here this morning um, to continue our webinar series associated with the Go Further Index and I'm joined with an awesome panel of people today who are all going to share their insights and thoughts into why Scotland and the north of England is such a brilliant place to be uh, thinking about starting or indeed growing and developing an innovative business looking for investment. So I'm delighted to be joined uh, today uh, by, uh, we've got Henry Warwick from um, Bowhurst. Hi, Henry. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, um, my pleasure. Nice to see you. We've got Khadija from uh, North Star Ventures, just uh, just on my doorstep. So nice to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. And uh, we've we've got George from Aero Cloud Systems. Morning, George. Good morning. Thank you very much for having us. And I think we've also potentially got um, Alistair, but I'm not sure he's with us quite yet. So maybe he's going to join us uh, later on in the web in the webinar series. Um, in terms of introductions, I'll, I'll take it kind of uh, geographically, I think, and um, perhaps start with, you, with yourself, Henry. So if you just tell us a little bit about yourself, particularly uh, as well about Borehurst and what you're doing in this space, that would be really, really helpful. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Nikki. Um, so I lead the research and consultancy team uh, at Bohurst. Bohurst is a platform tracking the UK's high growth economy. So we are interested in uh, many of you businesses uh, that, that are watching. Uh, we uh, start tracking a business basically from, from day one. So if you, if you start a business and raise a friends and family round, that's when we will, we will start following your business all the way through to um, your, your exit. Um, we're also interested in businesses that haven't raised um, equity. So we're, we're looking at uh, companies attending accelerators, companies spinning out of universities, um, companies where we can just see from their financials that they're growing um, organically, so it might be uh, bootstrapped in, in terms of their finances. That gives us a universe of about 35,000 companies across the across the UK that, that are high growth, ambitious and, and innovative. Uh, and we, on our platform, track those businesses and all of the sort of nodes in the ecosystem that, that they interact with, um, including investors. So that's uh, probably one of the main ones I'll talk about, but also those um, accelerators and universities that also help um, support and uh, foster growth. Just as in terms of me, when I say <laughs> I lead the research and consultancy team, that's quite quite a grand way of just saying I, I look at the picture in aggregate. Uh, so the, the, our platform is designed for if you want to look at specific investors and specific companies. But I'm I'm here to to help people understand uh, the the trends. So hopefully I'll be able to 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 use that to to give you some insight into what's going on in the north Fantastic. of Scotland. That, that sounds uh, great, Henry, and I'm, you know, we're pit particularly interested in um, what you're seeing characteristically, and we'll come back to this in a moment, the kind of businesses that you're, you're seeing attracting investment and what kind of investment they're succeeding at, in, in attracting. I think that will be really interesting, perhaps, for some of our audience today. Um, now, next, I'm, I'm going to go to George, and I've got to be honest, George, I'm absolutely fascinated and um, please, please don't take this uh, badly rest of the panel, but the fact that we've got a gentleman here that can both tell us he's a professional racing dri driver as well as a CEO of an innovative software business. Oh, was, was, <laughs> was, uh, not living, so much anymore. Living with a bunch of guys, you know, teenage boys and husband who are mad keen on motorsport. I couldn't resist hearing a little bit about that as well. So please, George. Uh, do introduce yourself. Yeah, great. Well, my name is George. I'm currently uh, one fifteenth, soon to be 16 uh, people at a company called AeroCloud, which I founded uh, with my good friend, Ian Ford-Smith. Um, what we do is we provide crystal balls by the medium of software using machine learning and AI to help airport operations staff predict the future, whether that be passenger predictions, uh, flight scheduling data and centralizing data, all things airport. Uh, we've had an amazing run uh, with COVID for the obvious reasons. Uh, it's been a terrible thing for the industry as a whole, but also created a platform for us to rocket into customers that we would may never have considered a cloud lower cost uh, provider as such as AeroCloud. 
Um, so we're currently over three offices. Uh, we have a big focus in the United States. We've just come home now into Europe. Um, and in my prior life, like you said, uh, I was a professional racing driver till the age of 26. I sit here at 29, a lot more uh, overweight than I was and uh, tarnished with a bit more gray hair uh, for running a business like AeroCloud. But uh, yeah, I had quite an interesting um, adoption into the world of business and trying to conjure up my learnings from the worlds of raising sponsorship and dealing with uh, manufacturers and uh, traveling and, and these sorts of things and, and taking that skill set into running a business like uh, like AeroCloud now. Wow, amazing. And um, you've uh, secured investment along the way. As you say, you've used some of those skills that you had in your former life to secure investment. So perhaps, uh, George, you can, you can share with us some of those um, sort of lessons and stories to help some of our audience today hear that firsthand in terms of what worked for you and what didn't work for you. Um, I'm going to go now, and I've, I've seen Alistair, welcome. Uh, apologies, I don't know whether you were on before and it was just the tech playing up and I couldn't see your face, but I'll, I'll come I'll come back to you in a second, Alistair, if that's okay, because I'm, I'm going kind of geographically here. And we're gonna move on now to Khadija from uh, North Star Ventures. Uh, so as I say, not, not too far from me, but um, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, great, thanks for having me, Nikki. Sorry, I seem to have a little bit of feedback so I can hear myself. But um, so yeah, we're from, I'm from Star Ventures. We're based in Newcastle, very close to you. Um, we've been based in the region since 2004. Um, we've invested over 100 million to 200 plus companies. We are a generalist, we receive um, seed or seed um, focus on digital technology science. We do a lot of university spin outs as well. Um, and we've been investing exclusively in businesses based in the Northeast. Um, at the moment, we're investing from Innovation Fund, which is a 27 million pound pot of money, which is part of the first strategy of the North Fund, um, 100 million pounds of money. Um, that's really us. Thank you for that. I think your yeah your sound is, is a little bit tricky. So uh, what we'll see is if, if we move through this, if we can uh, sort that out behind the scenes, that would that would be great. But you were just dropping in and out there a little bit. One of the things that um, I think is is uh, particularly interesting about your experience is the stuff that you did at uni as well and and the fact that you set up a, a fund at uni i mean it's kind of you've seen you've seen inf investment from from both ends of, of the spectrum in that regards so that must have been really exciting and maybe we can draw up um, that a little a little more later on and um, so last but by no means least uh, if we can go to alistair yourself now uh, it strikes me that you are mr technology in scotland you know, if, if there was a if there was a title to give you, because I mean, there is absolutely nothing. It seems that you're not involved in everything from an advisor to to government in Scotland, right through to uh, working with with entrepreneurs in this space, setting up businesses and building great innovative businesses around technology. So, um, yeah, tell us tell us what, how 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 that is and and a little bit more. No, and, and again, okay, it's no great. Great to be on the session today, and uh, it's it's been it's been I was going to say quite a journey. Actually, it's been it's been a fantastic journey. Um, I mean, working. I mean, so where I'm working at the moment is of at Strathclyde University, and one of the, the projects we're working on is kind of developing the the innovation district within the city centre, which is very very exciting with regards to all the kind of companies. But um, over the years, yes, I've been involved in. No private tech incubators, no um, was it accelerator programs, no entrepreneur programs. It's been, it's, been, it's been very, very great to have the opportunity to work with a lot of the founders, the businesses, and um, and really, really kind of great to see them kind of growing. But yeah, no, there's there's a in amongst a lot. And, but also, uh, interestingly, we're still developing Scotland. Um, and it's, it's, you know, the sector has still got a, a good way to kind of go. So it's good to kind of talk about that you know, on the session today. 
Brilliant. And absolutely really keen to hear from you, particularly the role that physical physical infrastructure and environments and that ability to meet in the physical space plays in investment and attracting investment. Because, you know, in this day and age, it would be dead easy to assume that those physical spaces, um, like what you're doing at the university and so on, and, and like what you're doing in Glasgow Centre, aren't important any longer when in fact I think they really really are in terms of fostering some of the collaboration etc so definitely want to hear a little bit more about that um, from yourself and the role that it has to play so in terms of um, to kick us off what I thought was um, Henry I wondered whether or not you could give us that sort of quite holistic view from a point of view of Scotland and the north in terms of what characterizes the kind of businesses that you're seeing attracting investment around the, the sort of theme of innovation and what kind of investment they're attracting? Perhaps if you could just spend insights into that. Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. Absolutely. Uh uh, everything intensive at least which is the most still the most common sort of form of financing um for for these high growth innovative uh companies um okay. i'm sorry i usually have to have that my, my numbers are gonna gonna speak to um in terms of across the whole um of uh the uk generally we've seen the uh the graph sort of go up and to the to the right at the beginning of the um at the beginning of uh, 2020 i sort of confidently predicted uh, another year of, of up and to the right in terms of the amounts being invested so that's number of deals being done the overall size of those deals and the number of of companies uh raising obviously uh, uh events overtook that uh prediction um in 2020 actually in around april may i was then predicting that it was going to be actually quite a bad year i managed to to get it wrong um twice uh, and in the end 2020 looks looks pretty robust it is slightly was slightly down on 2019 um but overall still saw um nearly 15 billion uh, invested into private companies wow. over over 6200 uh transactions so that's across the whole whole of the uk um it, comparatively now 2021 is starting to look uh, incredibly uh, incredibly rosy it's already for the whole of uk overtaken um 2016 and is is close to overtaking uh, the the amount that was seen in the whole of of 2018 as well so there's already been 11 billion um invested into um high, high growth businesses in 2021 uh, and that's over uh, 2800 transactions so also the, a lot of those deals are are very very large deals uh, coming on to um, Scotland uh, and the North, and I've just pulled together the the numbers for the for the whole of, of that sort of region. It's not quite quite the right word, um, but we see it um, flat, sort of 2018 through to 2020. So um, the 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 amount being invested is around about 1.3, 1.4 uh, billion in in each of those years, uh, and we see around 1,100. Um, transactions uh, a year so it's uh, those those numbers I quoted previously are obviously being being driven still um, by a huge amount um, uh, by, by by what's happening in in London so obviously in those numbers you get a massive skew from from the you know multi hundred million dollar rounds that you see uh, for some London um, tech companies if we look at 2021 for um, for, for, for the north and Scotland uh, again looking uh, very healthy uh, I would, I would like to sort of say confidently uh, that that it means it's going to be a record, uh, a record year. I think that is a reason. Is a reason. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you're hearing the the same feedback uh, that, that that I am. That was that was a bit overwhelming. Um, the uh, yes, yeah, so I, I, I was saying I was. Uh, 
I would like to be a bit more confident. Obviously, having got it all wrong uh, during the, the the pandemic year, <laughs> um, I'll uh, I'll I'll say it a bit less confident. Oh, go I, on, go for the prediction, Henry. Do it with confidence. I, I I think I think we'll see we'll see a record um, record year. So the, there's almost a billion been invested um, so far in in 2021. Uh, the number to beat is uh, 1.7, uh, which was the amount seen in in 2017. Uh, so we've got if if the first half of uh, if the second half of the year mirrors the first half of the year then you'll have you'll have a record year uh, in Scotland um, as I say those those numbers include a, a great variety of uh, of transactions so it, in, it includes friends and family rounds but it also includes those, those huge hundred million dollar rounds um, some caveats in the data that although that picture looks um, very good we are starting to see um, uh, a, a slowdown in the number of new um, companies uh, raising finance. So, uh, I, I mean, these whole high growth ecosystems are are sort of slightly um, cyclical, and uh, these numbers look great because there's been a huge sort of supply of companies, if you like, starting in uh, in 2011, coming out of the sort of creative destruction of uh, of that recession, if you like. Um, that the the amount of new businesses starting to be created has has slowed. Um, it's interesting. There are lots of different reasons that that can go into that. There are supply side issues in terms of um, the finance. There's changing changes in the um, financial requirements of those companies. In terms of uh, anyone with with entrepreneurial zeal, if you like, there are now more outlets um, uh, than ever before. So that you, know, it's it's possibly quite natural and maybe even a good thing. Uh, Cops are working well potentially. It's just um, to think four to five, ten years hence of how the ecosystem might look. There, there could be could be something to, to keep an eye on uh, there. And then, so I'm conscious of, of, of taking up all the other panelists' time. Yeah. So one of the um, things that's really interesting there, Henry, that's coming out is that there there is um, you know a pretty pretty buoyant investment market in in the Scot in Scotland and the north as a as an area, but that it is. Um, sort of lagging behind a little bit some of those uh, larger economic conurbations. Um, but one of the things that's really interesting that I've picked up from what you said there is that actually, because of the way the market's been, there might be more opportunity for investment uh, if you're an SME and you're a business and you're, you're, you're doing innovative things, you're developing IP and so on and so forth because of the way the market's behaving and because there are perhaps fewer investors are, are maybe having to be a little bit more open-minded. I wondered whether uh, Alistair or uh, Khadija had a view on that in terms of how investors are behaving at the moment. Are you, Khadija, perhaps yourself first of all, how, how are you finding um, kind of look, finding prospective uh, businesses to invest in? Are you having to change your view at the moment? And if so, what kind of things are you looking for? So Thank one of the things you. which, uh, yep, you can hear you, Gigi. Yeah. 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 Pretty awful uh, sound uh, feedback, Khadija. So just try it once more, and then what I might do is ask you to step out and come back in if that's all right. Yeah, sure, no worries. Um, so during the pandemic, I think we focused a lot more on our portfolio. Um, rather than new deals, um, I think a lot of a lot of um, VCs, especially with the funding from the Future Fund, it was a lot easier to support um, our portfolio companies um, and follow our money in those in those cases. Um, I think since since things have opened up, we have seen. Um, the way that North Star works is we have an open policy where anybody who wants to um, get in contact with us, if they're at the stage that they, they're looking to take on investment or they just want to have a chat, um, you know, our emails and details are always always on our website. So we have seen um, that pick up um, in the past few months. A lot of our deals come out of the universities, um, so Newcastle, Durham, Northumberland, North Northumbria and Sunderland and we have seen a healthy um, level of spin out um, activity and um, there has been a little bit of a lag just with how the universities have been working 
lack of lab space. So I think innovation has been slow in some areas, um, but generally how we're set up, um, um, it has been it has been slower than previous years. Um, but hopefully we will look to, look to to see an improvement. We haven't particularly changed the way that we go about um, interacting with businesses. I suppose it's more difficult to network now, but that seems to have moved online. Um, but um, hopefully, as, as, as we were saying, as things open up, we have more in-person meetings, in-person networking events. Um, it, it, should, it should improve. Okay. So I guess the, the message there is that it's very much, very much open for business. And, uh, you know, that post pandemic now, you're really eager to get back into that. Because um, this is what I would recognize from my experience of North Star as well, is that willingness to have a conversation and to see where it leads, which is not necessarily the experience that you have with all investors. Sometimes you have to go a little bit more pre prepared before you actually approach the investor. But something I think is particularly great about uh, North Star Ventures is, is your willingness to just have a conversation at an early stage and see see where that, that takes a business. Alistair, and then I'm going to come on to George, but, but Alistair first, um, what are you seeing in terms of uh, the, the ecosystem up in Scotland and, and where is, what's happening with investment? What kind of businesses are looking for it and are they getting the, the right kind of uh, sounds for, from investors? So the, within, um, I mean, certainly over the last year, I mean, in Scotland, um, obviously kind of funding, obviously competitions and kind of funding um, kind of initiatives like um, Engage Invest Exploit, have all been very, very popular. So we've actually got a very, very strong kind of pipeline kind of coming through. The, the other thing, another indicator of that as well is that, um, you know, certainly that, you know, that the companies that are, are that see the kind of pipeline within the universities have been coming through. And I know that, you know, certainly like over in Edinburgh, Edinburgh University, they've had their, you know, data-driven entrepreneurship program, you know, that's been up and running. Strathclyde have, you know, launched their, you know, their Strathclyde Inspire entrepreneurship strategy. And also, like up and even up in, in Aberdeen and, and Dundee, there's kind of healthy kind of scheme there. I mean, the thing which the, the one you know, biggest change that's happened in Scotland is, I mean, we we were fortunate, as I say, you know, as, as our audience may know, that the economic development is is devolved to Scotland. So it then means that um, the kind of government and Scottish Enterprise, their main economic agency, have got that ability to be able to support those companies. One of the things which has changed over the last year has been the, that kind of grant funding for the very, very early stage, you know, even innovation. And a lot of that had been kind of, you know, had stopped, you know, to prioritise primarily and quite rightly for, for you know, to fund um, business survival. But, you no, know, that's now started opening up again. You know, we're starting to move into you know, the kind of smart grants are back up again to kind of help support that kind of innovation. The thing which, we are, you no, know, one of the other things that happened in Scotland over the last year, which is, it's, it, we're, it's I say we're very proud of this, is there was an ecosystem review that took place um, by Mark Logan. Mark Logan, who's ex chief operating officer for Skyscanner, was you know, asked by the Scottish government to do a review. And that has now set in place you know, um, a foundation for you know, what's going to be called a tech scaler program. And that is going to be a national program of, of you know, incubation for kind of you know, digital software product based businesses. So, I mean, over the next five years, you're going to start to see you know, across all of Scotland that pipeline of businesses kind of, kind of developing. The only you know, area that we kind of got to look at is that deep tech area. I mean, finance for deep tech businesses. I mean, a lot of the angels, companies, can't, angel investors, may not have as much money for that but that's something which we need to, to look at brilliant that's really that's really really helpful as a as an overview of what's happening up there in scotland and it's certainly incredibly buoyant and um, based on on my experience and what i'm seeing up there at the moment as well and, and we're operating a, a debt fund at the moment that's playing a 
a, a, a significant role with other partners in the finance space to get those kind of wheels turning. And, and I think it is a really, really exciting area geographically at the moment, um, Scotland for particularly the tech sector. But let's come back to um, to the North and George. And, um, you know, you've got direct experience, George, of getting an incredibly uh, innovative business off the ground. And I think one of the one of the examples of how well you're doing is that you're actually um, already have a federal government in, in the US on your customer list, which is which is absolutely incredible. But mm. how what role has investment played in it? And you know, tell us what and all, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and what would be your best advice to other businesses that might be watching? Yeah, well, I mean, first off, uh, my sort of comments from listening to, to the panel is that I think that, you know, many VCs of the North and what Khadija was saying there is uh, they've sort of missed the trick. I mean, now is the time to double down. If we think about the cost base of uh, employment, the fixed costs associated with running a business now are, uh, that are advantageously low right now. And I think that, that we capitalize on that going back into raising our round in August with a VC that had a vision of doubling down and buying stuff cheap effectively when everybody else was in the in the sort of guarded mode. So I think the first message has got to be, if there's people listening about investing in the North, that now is the time to do so and get your money in now, get supporting good people uh, with good ideas and, and great businesses because to capitalize on, on this opportunity that we all have right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that what Henry is saying, I, I really think that we will excel uh, this year. And if you look at uh, the UK as a whole, we are by far um, the leader in money into startups. Um, and correct me if that's the more technical term. I'm not well educated or well versed in that space. But from what I read, uh, the time is absolutely now. I think for the reasons why a business should be looking at the north, whether you're a southern business looking to move up north or whether you're a northern business looking to raise, um, you've got so many uh, untarnished and untapped human potential. And let's face it, these technology businesses, SaaS startups, uh, in our space, B2B SaaS startup space, um, the people are the real asset in the business that are creating that IP that you refer to. So even though it might take some more undercover work, some direct approaching, some maybe some kissing a few frogs before you find the prince, you know, that you need to get out there and, and find these really great uh, technical people and, and engineering people uh, and get them into your business um, on effectively a, a decent salary because you have the opportunity in the North to delight with salary rather than just service a London salary with a high cost base um, when they're at home paying rent in Battersea at a thousand quid a month for, for a room. Um, up North, we have more space and you can get exactly the same room for 250 quid. So now we've got this great opportunity there with human uh, resource. On the senior hires, what I'm finding now is that seniors that have been paying lots in mortgage down south are now looking at places like where we're based as Macclesfield. You can buy a house mm. for three times the size, uh, yeah. move your family up, get some space, get out with the dog, uh, or potentially work remotely from somewhere like the Lake District or up north, you've got some beautiful areas in Scotland with great Wi-Fi connection where you can seriously add some serious value to both your personal life and also uh, your professional life and bring out that experience from London rather than keeping it in the, the southern bubble. And I'm a big advocate for that. And, you know, I think me, I'm a co-founder, Ian, are incredibly passionate about uh, selling not only our business for a, as a place to work, but the location of where we are based um, and a collaborative working effort and some days out the office, some day in the office, as something that people now want. And we're capitalizing on that, like I say, because of the, the human capital. Um, and some of the, the, the flip sides that I've got written down here is that, you know, a lot of, a lot of um, London companies are, um, have an issue with um, poaching talent from each other. Whereas up north, we have an issue with the talent pool as a whole. Um, so there's definitely a challenger argument. I'm not saying I'm right, I'm right in my thinking, but there's certainly those considerations. Um, but I believe that, you know, it's it's much better to be a crocodile in a pothole than a medium sized fish in the sea. Brilliant. And um, you mentioned there about uh, locality and uh, the benefits of it and so on and so forth. As a business yourselves, um, you know, Alistair was talking there about the, the physical ecosystem up in Scotland and the investment that's going into that to bring 
businesses together in, in things called innovation districts. How important do you think that is? Is that something that you guys did as a business? I think what latterly Alistair was saying about getting someone from that's that's done it before, that's reputable, like the Skyscanner um, founder, that's really where I would want to see it. And if, if if I make a success of error cloud in whatever form, I would like to be in some sort of similar position to that. I believe that we need to hear from people that have already done it. And I also believe that there shouldn't be as many barriers to people's perceptions of reaching out to ex-founders and people that are deemed successful in in a, in the in the circles that they operate in, I don't think that there should be any barriers to somebody that um, uh, is thinking about starting a business and needs some advice to reach out to founders and 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 ask them the questions. Um, but I would much rather hear those sorts of words of advice from people who have done it before. There's nothing better than that, uh, me personally. In terms of the physical space and the and the small pots of funding that Alistair's deploying. Um, and helping to employ, whether that's through a 0% loan, we've had the bounce back loan scheme, all of these things should be utilized. And you can find all of this information on the internet. Uh, just don't get yourself into trouble. Make sure that you you have every intention of paying it back and doing the best by the money. Um, but at the same time, you, you know, you're a UK taxpayer, take full advantage of these things and uh, get Alistair to work. That's what I'd be saying, you know, uh, that's what he's there for. And that's what he comes to work for. So, you know, let's, let's just, you know, increase the amount of information that are going to those guys yeah what were we going to say there yeah absolutely i mean the i mean certainly for the founders that we're working with it's um it's though it, even though you know, the investors know that's what we're here to do and we're here to support and kind of grow those businesses there's a good point um that george has kind of mentioned there i mean where when we see this across many sectors, there's lots of people who've been around kind of helping kind of companies before, but we kind of really need to kind of get the founders of the, the next generation helping the new founders. Sounds kind of crazy. Um, but um, I mean, that's one of the things which we're seeing very much now is we're now at this point where, certainly in Scotland, you're getting you know, the capital that has um, come out from the likes of you know, Fan Jewel. No, even um, no 4G Studios, Chris Vandekeil, and you no, know, and and the people like you no know, Gareth from Skyscanner, Gareth, that's now starting to come back into the into the, into the ecosystem now, and that is then bringing their expertise in. So we're kind of this, we're moving. Well, certainly in Scotland, we're moving forward into that, and I think that's we just need to kind of get back together and meet each other in person. Brilliant. Um. Henry, I just want to come back to, to Bohurst for a minute because, you know, whilst uh, you are specialising in terms of data and analytics in this space and through the use of that data and analytics acting as a kind of almost broker as well, I think, in terms of connecting uh, businesses with potential investors by um, pub publishing and, sh and sharing that data, you yourselves have been on on quite a journey as a business um and is investment something that you've attracted into into bullhurst or how have you feel that growth and development oh i think you're on mute uh henry oh yep yeah. sorry uh sorry. I, can, you can hear me now yeah great um yes yeah, so we uh, bo has been going since um 2010 uh, and at the beginning, um, we, we're now customer funded, which I guess is what, what every every business is aiming towards. But um, uh, back in the beginning, we did take on um, external investment. Uh, we had a slightly unusual um, journey. So we are funded or we were funded um, uh, exclusively by angels. And we, we took on just uh, under about five million pounds worth of investment. So being able to being able to get that level of investment from angels, I know is very much not um uh the normal experience i guess mm. we're, we're lucky to have found angels with with quite um quite deep uh deep, quite deep pockets um one of our angels is uh, is a chap called um charlie songhurst who is um pretty prolific throughout the the uk in terms of investing in um software software and tech um tech businesses he, he invested in entrepreneur first and invests in many of their portfolio companies and all, all of those um sorts of things so it's it's been a very sort of meta experience um for us and sort of seeing um you know, we, we we track ourselves as as a as a business if you like in terms of seeing that um 
it, whilst I'm whilst I'm thinking about angels and and sort of speaking to some of Alistair's point, Alistair's points about what's happening in Scotland, it's still um, kind of remarkable that that Scotland is quite different um, from from the rest of the UK in terms of its funding landscapes. It's got probably the sort of most efficient angel landscape out of out of anywhere in in the UK um, at least and. I think there's a there's a strong hope um, from from everyone that that can be be replicated um, uh, across the UK. Indeed, the the British Business Bank uh, has an angel um, a regional angels program. I think is what what they call it. So it's hard to hard to remember what all of these policies get called. Um, which is is sort of deliberately trying to trying to replicate that sort of um, what what's been seen in Scotland for for um, other regions. So although I I sort of sounded a warning about um, the the earlier stages of, of fundraising looking like they they might not be be working as well in the in the we're seeing fewer companies doing it. Um, there are at least sort of positive headwinds and um, potential changes that that could um, for the rest of the UK and and, and the North um, replicate what's happening in Scotland. Interesting, interesting. Thanks. Um, in terms of uh, Khadija, I just wanted to come back to yourself. Um, when you have those uh, initial conversations with businesses, what kind of things are you looking for? If somebody pitches up at your door and says, you know, I'm looking for, for investment to drive the next stage of the business on, what, what kind of things are you looking for from those businesses? I suppose it comes down to the type of business. So I'd say most of our portfolio is B2B, SaaS, um, software businesses, we have some life science businesses and engineering businesses. Um, so if you split the two out, I'd say for we are a generalist seed stage investor, we usually invest you know, average tech sizes in you know, 100 to 500k, usually in syndication. So the round sizes that we're looking to participate are range from a million, a million and a half to 2 million. So at that stage for software businesses, um, you know, usually there is some type of product. You might have some traction with early customers. Um, just being able to demonstrate that, um, you know, what you have is innovative and it's not only the team that's been able to develop it, but you also have buying from consumers. Um, and really, um, from an early stage, you know, it really comes down to the team itself. So is the founders have the right skill set to drive the business forward? Do they have the right network? Um, general, just, you know, the market that they're operating in, is that growing? How has COVID affected it? A lot of, a lot of our assumptions and our thesis is, you know, a year, a year and a half ago have, have, have slightly changed the way that we do business. Whether everybody does business um, has has changed. That has led to a lot of opportunities that businesses um, have been able to take advantage of. Some of them have to pivot in order to um, in order to grow. I think from the from the engineering businesses or the life science businesses, um, it's they're a lot earlier stage. It's pre product. It's you know really high risk when it comes to technology. So um, in those in those areas, we're not looking for the traction in, in the traditional sense. We're looking for how innovative um, how innovative their solution is. What is the possible you know, potential market opportunity? Um, and we have a lot of advisors in the university that can help us help us assess whether or not you know this specific new technology you know could. You know, is it is it something that's you know thirty years off, or is it something that you know short term investment could could um, you know lead to a really successful innovative business? Okay, that's that's a really really helpful um, overview. Now um, we have got a couple of questions actually in in the Q and A, which I, I'd like to take, and and then I want to come back to this notion of team um, that you've you've raised there, Khadija, and perhaps again ask George what that meant uh, to your business. But before I do, um, Finley uh, has asked uh, a question about, can somebody just explain what an angel investor is? And Henry, I'm gonna come to you because you kind of, you raised this notion of efficient angel investors. And uh, I think somebody else mentioned earlier that sometimes the, the language and the dialogue around investment just makes it feel a bit like a black art. So one of the things that UMI we feel really, really strongly about is making things easier. 
Um, so let's try and demystify that that kind of language a little bit. Could you tell us what an angel investor is, Henry? Uh, abs absolutely. Uh, <laughs> it's it's usually a rich person. Uh, or <laughs> depends on depends on your definition of rich, sure. But uh, it's it's someone who's looking to to invest into um, uh, startups. They um, join early on. They they end up taking a stake uh, in your business. Often you will want that person to be well connected so that they'll be giving more than uh, just their money. So that's that's the conversation starts around uh, how they might give you money that you can you can invest and use to grow your business in return for which they take a, a stake. Uh, they, they end up owning a percentage of um, of your business, um, but hopefully they will uh, not only be a person you like and who you are happy to work with, because these these journeys can go on for a for a long time. You know, like like I say, I mentioned ten years that we've we've been friends with uh, uh, Charlie, um, and uh, as a as a bit of background, there are also incentives in the UK um, to to angel investing as well. So. Um, a lot of people start out becoming angels because um, you can get tax relief on your your angel investing um, uh, as well. So the, there's a huge amount. There's a 50% relief to be had on your first 150k, um, and then there's a slightly lower relief on the sort of five million of investments um, raised thereafter. So um, uh, just sort of worth bearing in mind that for for angel investors. Um, there, there can be two motivations. There can be the return on investment that you're going to deliver directly as a company, and there can be uh, the benefit they get of uh, from from tax relief. That's really helpful. Thank you. Um, and I think the the point that you make there about the fact that look for more than just money is really really important with any investor, isn't it? You know, the notion that actually, rather than I think sometimes as a business you can fall into the trap of um, having to it's a one-sided pitch that you're having to pitch your business to try and secure the investment but in actual fact you've got to make sure that you look for the right kind of investor the right kind of personality the right kind of motivations and drivers as well as the right kind of networks you know how are they going to actually open up distribution networks r d networks etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think that theme around look for more than just money is absolutely crucial regardless of whether it's angels or any other kind of investment. We've got um, another question uh, here from, uh, let's have a look from Stephen, who's been exchanging emails um, on starting up a, a disruptive business within a multi-billion pound industry. Um, and let's just have a look here. And people are telling him that he should be looking uh, down south, actually, rather than perhaps looking northward. Um, so he's asking, what is the panel's view on this? Why, uh, why should he be completely kind of turn 180 and instead of gazing down north to set up this disruptive tech business, looking to, to further for, down south, sorry, looking further north? What, what's the panel's thoughts on that? I could potentially add, add a bit of value there. Um, Thank you, George. I think I think sometimes the I think if you're looking at this as a problem, then the problem is is that all the money is typically usually down south. You know, I think if Henry was to say where are the most amounts of transactions happening, they are inside the M25. Yeah, so I'm pro probably sure that historically he's being told that information. Uh, my only rebuttal to that would be that there are great funds outside uh, of London. Uh, there's some specific North funds. We've got uh, one on the call today. There's a uh, Pichura or Pachura. I can never um, say it correctly in Manchester. Um, there's lots of great deal makers in, in my round specifically. I saw fundraising as a full time job and it took my eye off running the business and actually generating the sales, which is my skill set. So I, I initiated it, what is called a deal maker a no win, no fee type um, consultant, if you were, that knew the landscape. Um, to do our raise effectively for us for a fixed fee. Um, and if anybody wants information on that, I'm sure I can um, make that introduction. Um, but, you know, I don't think that the, I don't think access to capital is the problem right now in terms of raw coin. I think uh, what uh, has been said as well is that you should be looking for skill sets. So if there's someone that has, that capital and also has the skill set that you require in order to excel you to the next level, 
that's the person you should be looking for if they're up north or they're down south pick the right person for you um so that would be my feedback really helpful thank you any other thoughts um alistair in terms of of scotland it's it's a tech business in a disruptive sector why why would you want them in why would you want them in scotland what what are the advantages to them you know this is your chance to sell to this business that's about to 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 go off down south give it your best shot <laughs> no, no, it's, it's great no it's, it's great that Stephen asked the question um I think a lot of founders can have I mean, I'm talking about you know in Scotland and um, I mean one of the things which it's it's knowing who your investor is right and whether or not they've got the expertise whether they've got the networks to actually kind of support you or whether it actually fits their kind of um you know, you know their portfolio and I mean there, there's certainly a, you know, a lot, there's certainly a lot more kind of investors I mean one of the things we're starting to see now is kind of coming back to the angel we're starting to see a lot more individual investors coming through um, and there's a a shift away from I wouldn't say they are part of syndicates, interest syndicates, but they will be they will invest on their own. Um, we do have um you no know, Tech Start Ventures is one of the, the, the main ones. Tar text text Tech Start Ventures and also Par Equity are the, the are the main ones. But I would actually kind of say is don't necessarily think about it being you no know, that people are saying to you to go down south it, it may be the case that you no know, the marketplace that you're working within that there are there are better you no know, kind of um, vcs who have got her focus in on that um, and this is one again which we're seeing within the you know the you know the green energy space um, there's there there may be more i think and we have seen that there's there, there are probably a few more kind of green energy investors you no know, in you no know, this this the south of the country and um, rather than having a dedicated one up in the, in in scotland so i would say is you no know, yes we want you to be there um you no know, if you want to have a chat Stephen, you no know, by all means you no know, please do here to help and support you in that um but i think again it's it's just really being sure about what your proposition is know your team and also know if, with um you know with the investors you're speaking with but most of the companies that we work with don't just look in at scotland they look you no know, no certainly across the uk i think i would encourage that for every you no know, company to do that indeed that that's really helpful Alistair, and thanks ever so much because i was going to put you on the spot and ask if you'd be okay for stephen to get in touch afterwards because actually just reading the question i've now realized stephen's actually in sterling so uh so here's here's your chance to to hang on to business and i think one of the things that that we certainly see up in scotland and and perhaps this is a little bit of what you were touching on previously george is one of the massive benefits i think of scotland in the north in terms of areas to do business in is that passion for place and that real commitment and kind of passion and loyalty that you get. And, uh, you know, depending upon the stage of the business, starting out with an investor in Scotland who can then open up further investment markets, be that in the UK or even globally, because one of our partners in the Go Further Index actually deals with uh, networks, huge networks of corporate venturers on a global basis. Um, so, but I think getting that kind of, passion commitment loyalty and drive that you'll get from an investor in scotland in your area is immensely benefit as well a benefit and not to be underestimated so stephen if you um let us have your contact details we'll certainly broker um connection uh with alistair so hopefully that will that will be helpful we've got another question here from richard and this is about commercializing uh research um, from universities and what he's saying is it's a huge challenge in terms of actually commercializing some of this awesome stuff that's existing in university loads of stuff going on in incubators but what he's asking is how can investors help how can investors help get that absolutely awesome research and innovation out of universities into the commercial space and perhaps First of all, um, I'll come back to Khadija because you mentioned about university spin-outs earlier, and this is something that that North Star are quite active in. How how do you think investors can help Richard and his challenge? 
So I suppose um, the universities that we work with, they have um, something called the Northern Accelerator Programme, which um, takes the, the innovation um, puts it through um, a series of steps to commercialise it. What you usually have is you usually have the founder who really understands the technology, but you don't have the salesperson who can get this to the stage of commerci commercialisation. They don't have the person who can put it, put the technology in front of the right people at the right time. So what our what the program does is um, looks for talent who has the experience in the in the sector has the sales expertise and can really drive drive the business forward because yeah as you said you know the university has a lot of you know great innovative technology but it, it needs to go there's a gap that needs to be bridged from you know what a regular bc is comfortable at investing at and the stage that they're at so you know as as a as a as a VC, we have um, a network. You know, we've been in we've been in this area since two thousand and four. We also have founders in, it, in our own portfolio um, who can who can help. And they've they've been through the similar challenges, maybe you know, a couple of years before. So putting putting them all into contact is where we really we really see our value as an investor. Yes, anybody can can give you investment and, and money, but it's the it's the network, it's the doors you can open. It's you know when you're going through um, you know patent issues, when you're going for your CE mark, have an investor who can. Who can you know bring their expertise, bring their experience? That's that's what you that's what you need to look for. And um, I think there's a, there's another you know you've, you've previously spoken about you know as a VC you know there's an assumption that we get pitched to. We never really pitch ourselves, but you know from what I believe is it should be a two way conversation. You know not they the most there's a, there's a saying that says you know most we see um, relationships you know, last longer than most marriages these days. <laughs> you have to be careful with you know who you're who you're selling part of your company to, what that person brings to the table. Um, yes, starting with starting with North Star at this at the seed seed level when you're getting your technology and your product up and running, we can only um, help you so far. There's, there will come a point where you will have to go to a bigger a bigger venture capital firm where you might have to go down to London when you know your customers grow and it makes sense to have an office down south. But from in the early stages, um, you know, you think about what you really need and think about you know how capital efficient you can be if you base your company up in the north, up in Scotland, um, and then having the right partner who can then open those doors and make the transition when you're ready to grow, when you're ready to go, you know, even internationally, we have a number of Dutch um, and a Belgian BC in a few of our portfolio companies um, that, that we've brought in. So just thinking That's about really helpful. really helpful. Thanks, Kijia. And, and certainly, I think, um, you know, the, the Northern Accelerator Programme in, uh, in the Northeast has been incredible at brokering in some of those skill sets alongside the technical expertise and the R&D expertise and university spin outs. And those kind of programs exist uh, in many, many places. You know, Alice is involved in them up in Scotland. George, I know there's 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 a number of those kind of activities across in in the northwest as well and throughout Yorkshire. So I think that notion that investors can actually bring the missing bits of expertise or links to help you commercialize, whether that be sales skills or finance skills, is really important. But again, you brought up the theme there of uh make sure it's two-way street and look for more than more than just money and understand what it is you're wanting from the investor relationship don't just go thinking you have to pitch your business to them and to, con to convince them george when you were raising money how did how did you approach that you know you said that in the past you used your skills of raising sponsorship which which again must be all about pitching so how did you translate that into into that sort of two-way approach yeah, sure. Like I alluded to before, I can't take all, all credit for um, we, we employed the expertise piece. And then when we actually came to our, I think we ended up doing maybe 20 pitches in the end, which in relevant terms is really not a lot. Uh, we had three meetings, three offers uh, or two offers, sorry, for lead investor. Um, 
And then delving down into what they could offer that wasn't money. I think that's something that's so widely talked about. Every VC talks about value add. Um, it's very difficult to uh, actually determine what value a VC can add, in, in my opinion, unless you look at uh, past uh, experiences. So as a founder that's um, looking to attract investment, reach out to the portfolio companies and ask them straight, what's it like to work with um, Henry? What's it like to work with George? What, nice. what happens when it's not going so well? How did they react? Are they supportive or are they uh, more, more in acting like a PE firm and, and want to uh, squeeze every inch of uh, life out of you or whatever it may be? And, you know, a lot of VCs have a bad reputation for doing that. There's certainly some... Um, that are, have got a reputation for doing that. And then there's also others that have got a great reputation for helping founders. What you've got to consider as well is when the, the VC is a business who is also in the business of raising money. So a lot of their focus is on raising that fund and actually where you want as a founder is focused on helping you building your business. So don't be afraid to ask them the question, how much of your week is spent working with your founders versus how much of your week is is spent servicing your LPs uh, commercial desires. And I think that that's a very legitimate question to ask and uh, becoming a lot more prevalent now. Um, and certainly for us, we were asking those questions uh, because we didn't just need money. We needed someone who had the ability to scale our business because we didn't quite have that experience set that was required from a senior level. Really helpful. Thank you. I think we do our due diligence, but I think founders often get scared to, you know, do their due diligence on, 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 the, on the venture. Agreed. Or the Absolutely. And I think that it's refreshing for you as well to get to get a reach out saying, can you introduce me to three of your founders? Let, let me reference you. I think that also drives a little bit of FOMO and a little bit of... Um, oh, wow, these guys are doing a proper job, so they would do a proper job in their business. And I think that that's, that's a really good thing on both sides. And honesty as well, like, I think just having an honest question, uh, what do you need from us? Uh, what can I provide to you? And just strip out all of these buzzwords and, and stuff and just get to the core, what you're trying to achieve, when you're going to achieve it, and how much money you need to do that. Brilliant. Thanks. Thanks, guys. So um, we're, we're uh, nearly at the, the end of our time. So uh, I'm going to sum up a, a wee bit in a moment. But before I do, I'd just like to come back to each of you and give you the opportunity that if you had to leave today's uh, audience and those that will watch, watch this webinar in the future with, with one or two real gems of advice in terms of what you would uh, suggest to them if they're considering looking for investment in Scotland and the North. Can I, first of all, let's go in uh, the other way around this time and we'll go furthest North first and, and go to Alistair. Oh, thanks, Nikki. Um, so, so for me, anybody who's looking for investment is to speak to people, you know, be in amongst the, um, speak to other companies, um, you know, speak to investors. They're a friendly bunch of people. They're there to provide support. Um, yes, they may not have you know, the things that you're looking for, but very much kind of you know, engage and make yourself aware of what you're doing. Um, it's, another thing is, the other bit of advice is it does take time. You know, and that's where it's all about building relationships. And the good thing about it, and this is one of the things which, can, again, it kind of came through a conversation last week, Everybody in, in, if you're a startup, you know, everybody knows each other and that's a really, really positive thing. And it's one of the things where it is, you know, Scotland is a bit of a village. Um, and if we don't know somebody, we, know, we will know somebody who will be able to help you. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, Khadija. Yeah, I suppose um, raising capital, you know, as George says, can be a full-time job. So, you know, make it make it easy for yourself. Do your research. You know, before you know, contacting a bunch of VCs. Do you know? Do they invest in your space? Do they invest at the stage that you're at? Um, how much investment? You know, what's your uh, capital requirement? Are they are they the right person, the right um, firm to fit that? Um, and I'd say, you know, start conversations earlier on and ask you know ask difficult questions I think you know there is a lot of jargon that goes along with the industry you know just I'm, I'm more than happy to to clear any of that up um you know any VC um I'm sure would would, would be in a similar situation um yeah just just ask 
Brilliant. Thanks, Khadija. That's really kind. Um, and I'll come back to uh, to how people get in touch uh, at the end of the session. George? Uh, sorry, a little bit, a bit more of the same. I think they're all legit points. Uh, I've just put here, get your email on, get on LinkedIn, start doing your research, make a local shortlist of people you want to speak to. These are people who have done it before. Uh, ask them why, how, what, when, uh, all the real questions that you need the advice to in, in a in a confidential um, and, tr and trustworthy manner. Um, don't be afraid of what's the worst that can happen, right? You've already made the biggest steps to uh, starting your own business. Uh, that's a massive, massive um, uh, kudos in itself and such a difficult thing to do. It's a really lonely, um, narrow road. And I think that uh, you've done the hard bit already. So finish it off and and find some great people and and convince them that uh, your idea or your already existing business is the one to invest in. Brilliant, thank you. And uh, last but not least, before I sum up, Henry. Uh, I guess getting the the timelines right is is pretty crucial um, as well. So make sure whoever you're talking to about investment is going to be aligned to when you want to leave leave the business or sell the business here how how are you going to exit how is the investor going to make their return and get those those times aligned you know even with angels it's an interesting one that they can be as impatient an investor as their as their temperament um suggests so so make sure um you're, you're finding someone who's on the on the same page you don't want to be you don't want someone who rather than giving you advice is just going to be pressuring you to to exit sooner than you want to brilliant thank you listen um guys uh before i, I sum up Thank you ever so much for taking the time to join us this morning. That's been hugely, hugely useful. I think it's always helpful to hear from people who've been there, done that, are operating in this space um, directly. So, so thanks very much for that. So just uh, in summary, in terms of uh, if you do want to get in touch, um, then please just drop us a line um, at We Are Umi and we'll broker in some introductions to people that have been on today's panel. Equally, if you're left with thinking, well, actually, I want to know a little bit more about that program that they mentioned in Scotland or the Northern Accelerator program, or I still just don't know where to start, please do get in touch with us at UMI and we'll make sure that we, we get you onto that first kind of stepping stone or, or heading in the right direction. But what you've heard today is, uh, is some really, really exciting stuff, I think. So Henry's told us that we're already at a billion pounds worth of investment in 2021 in Scotland and the North. And we've got a target to beat of 1.7 million. And lots of chat and conversation about the, the market's open and ready and willing. And um, investors are moving out of portfolio management and the, the last year and into thinking about how they get their, their money out into the right businesses. Henry also said that Scotland's got the most efficient angel network. I mean, um, I think it was yourself, Henry, so apologies if I'm putting words in your mouth there. But uh, so clearly, if you are thinking of angel investment, then that's one to, to have a look at and a think about. Um, George gave some advice about the fact that uh, he and his colleagues recognised what skill set they had. So they employed somebody to help them to skew the finance who did have the skill set, who already had the networks on a no win, no fee basis. So perhaps that's something to think about. If that's not your skill set, how can you bring that in in a financially kind of acceptable manner? Um, also, you've got that really, really strong theme of look for more than just money. It's a two way street. You've heard that from businesses on the call, as well as brokers, as well as investors. It's a two way street. Make sure that you're doing your due diligence on the investors that you're looking at and some great advice on that note as well from George in terms of, uh, and, and Khadija in terms of looking at other businesses and talking to other businesses in that investor's portfolio. So you can really understand their characteristics. You can understand their motivations for why they're investing in you. You can understand how aggressive or otherwise they would be in terms of return on investment, et cetera. Um, and then finally, I'm gonna leave on this point because I think it's a great one. Don't be afraid. What's the worst that can happen straight out of George, George Richardson's mouth this morning in terms of you've done the hardest bit. You've, 
you've developed the product, you've done the innovation or you're doing the innovation and you've started your own business. So don't be afraid to take the plunge and start talking to some investors because the market is very much ready and open for business. So I'm going to leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed this morning. I hope uh, you've got some really, really helpful information and understanding from it. But if you would like to know any more, if you'd look like us to broker in some introductions to colleagues on the panel this morning or other products, then just drop us an email or get in touch with us at UMI. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.